Good morning and welcome to London. Today is a very, very big day because I'm flying almost 6,000 miles to Shanghai, China. Already checked in, I'm mentally preparing myself for an 11 hour flight. So right now the time is 9.13. The flight's not until 11.40, so I have plenty of time, but it's gonna be a long flight. And there was a little bit of confusion at the check-in desk because I don't have a visa for China. I have a UK passport, but no visa. I'll talk about that later. It's time to go to the gate. And speaking of passports, I have a new one, a brand new passport. This is the first time I'm using my new passport and I'm going to China. My last passport still had six years until it expired, but I had no more pages. I think that's a good problem to have. Flying with Air China today, and I thought I'd treat myself. I upgraded to premium economy, and it wasn't that much more expensive than economy. First class was a little bit too far, but yeah, we're gonna be premium economy today, so very excited. Here we go, let's go to China. Welcome to Premium Economy. I'm in 33D. This is very nice. <laughs> Here we have some slippers. We get some water and headphones. Very nice. And there's outlets. <laughs> This plane is empty. I have a whole road to myself. What? This is gonna be a good flight. One big party. This is so comfortable. Whole road to myself. We have free Wi Fi. 11 hour flight with free Wi Fi is unbelievable. And it's breakfast time. We have chicken and rice, some pasta, chocolate cake, bread. Life is good. Why does aeroplane food taste so nice? The dessert is always delicious. Nine and a half hours to go. One movie down, six hours to go. We're currently flying over Russia. It is currently 4.42 UK time and we're not gonna get another meal. We get breakfast in like three hours, they said, so they give me some snacks. More drinks. The flight attendants are so kind. We have four hours to go, four hours. I think we're about to cross. Yeah, we're almost crossing the border to China. It's pretty crazy, we're literally flying through time zones. So Shanghai time is eight hours ahead of London time. So that's a big difference. We're gonna get there at 6.30 a.m. Shanghai time. And I'm so comfortable. Like, I don't want this flight to end. I still can't believe that I have my own row. You have as many drinks as you want. The food's been good, the service has been good. I'm so comfortable. It is 6.30 p.m. London time. So that's like 12.30 a.m. Chinese time and it's breakfast. So we have omelet with bacon, we have some fruit and we have a croissant and yogurt. Yeah. Two more hours. I have not slept at all but we're currently flying over Beijing. minutes 10 minutes
Welcome to Shanghai. I'm so excited. Wow. Extremely comfortable flight, Air China. Very, very, very good. I'd much rather be comfortable on an 11-hour flight than uncomfortable in a five-hour flight, definitely. I just landed at Shanghai Pudong International Airport and now I need to get through immigration without a visa. All right, I think I need to go to these machines because it says foreigners this way, Chinese that way. So let's try. So I just did my fingerprints and there's an arrival card too. So I think I need to do that, not sure. All right, got my arrival card. See, it literally says foreigner. Fingerprint self collection area. Let's go. I am unbelievably excited to be in China. You'll find out later why Shanghai has a special place in my heart, but I can't wait for this trip. I'm so excited. I'm in no rush. It's 6:50 a.m. The airport's really, really quiet, and ooh, I'm so excited. No problems getting through immigration. I'm officially in China. Let's get the luggage. I actually cannot believe that I'm back in Shanghai. So we're just gonna go straight to the metro. Shanghai has the best metro in the whole world. You're gonna see it, but the maglev. This is the fastest train in the world. But wait until you see the Shanghai metro. It's absolutely amazing. I have a million stories to tell you about Shanghai. You'll find out why. But I love Shanghai so much. I can't believe I'm back. It's gonna be so much fun. I hope that you're excited to see to see Shanghai, China. So I did need to do the fingerprints for immigration and, and I did need to do the arrival card, but not the one that I did. I had to do a new one because I'm only coming to Shanghai to transfer. It's a very long transfer, but technically do not need a visa because I'm transferring through Shanghai. I need to practice. I've not spoken in a long time. Wow, I'm so excited to speak Chinese. I'm so excited to see Shanghai, show you Shanghai, eat some food. It's gonna be, it's gonna be great. I hope you're excited. I'll show you it in more detail later. But every single time you go to the Shanghai Metro, you need to go through X-ray, all your bags, everything. Welcome to the best metro system in the world. Here we go. We are moving, baby. Let's go and see Shanghai, China. I'm gonna say it again. I can't believe how comfortable that flight was. 11 hours. It was definitely 100% worth it. Upgrading to premium economy. Definitely so comfortable. And I can't believe that I'm in Shanghai. I can't believe I'm on the Shanghai Metro. Wait until you see this place. Just wait. So there are many, many, many great things about the Shanghai Metro. The first thing is it's absolutely massive. Like you can get anywhere in the city on the Shanghai Metro. The second reason is it's unbelievably cheap. So we just went from here, Pudong Airport Terminal. We went all the way to East Nanjing Road and then we changed to Line 10. And now we're at Yuyuan. And that's gonna cost me the equivalent of one US dollar, one dollar to get downtown Shanghai. It's about an hour, one dollar. On the London Underground, on the New York subway, that would be five times as much. I'm on the streets of Shanghai. I'm gonna keep saying it, but I cannot believe that I'm back in Shanghai. I love Shanghai so much, like so, so, so much. And I can't wait to show you, like I just wanna film everything. I just wanna show you everything. Look at this, it's interesting. Look at this, look at this. Because there is nowhere in the world like Shanghai, China. There's nowhere. I've been to over 60 countries. Nowhere is like Shanghai. So this is the area that I'm staying in. The hotel's just over there. They're gonna let me keep my suitcase there until check-in because it's only 9.30 a.m. There's something extremely special, like one second away from my hotel. I can't wait to show you it later. I'll show you the hotel later, but I need to show you the most famous thing in Shanghai right now. Weather today is absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to show you Shanghai. I'm gonna keep saying it. I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but there's such a huge misconception about China and let's get to where we're going and then I need to tell you a story. Look at all these chickens. Every single one of these bikes has its own QR code. I'll tell you about them in a second. Are you ready to see one of the most beautiful views in the world? That is the Shanghai skyline. 
and it gets better. I'm gonna come back here at night and it's the whole place is lit up. It's absolutely beautiful. I love Shanghai. So this side of the river is called the Bund and then over there is Lu Jia's Way. We're gonna go there later, but I think it's time for a story. I'm sure everybody watching this can guess my relationship with Shanghai right now, but let me explain. So like I said, this is the place to be in Shanghai. This is the number one tourist area. This is the number one hotspot. And I once came here on New Year's Eve and it was absolutely crazy. Like you could not move. There was a million people everywhere, but it is absolutely unreal. It's amazing. I know in the past I've spoken Chinese and so many people have asked me, why do I speak Chinese? And I've never, I've never given the answer, but I used to live in Shanghai. That is why I speak Chinese. And everybody knows that I used to be a primary school teacher. That was my job before I did YouTube. And it was here. I was a primary school teacher in Shanghai, China, and it was an unbelievable experience. I lived here for two years and I'm so passionate about London. It's my favorite city in the world, but I'm also so, so, so passionate about Shanghai. I can't wait to show you the city. It's it's an unbelievable place like China China as a whole is is unbelievable like the people the food the culture the places the history there is so much going on in China but if you watch the news China has a very bad reputation this video is absolutely not about politics I don't care if you hate China or not it doesn't make it doesn't change anything because I'm standing in China right now I lived here for two years I know the truth and people are gonna say but China this China that China that Name a country in the world that doesn't have problems. You can't. Every single country, doesn't matter how amazing it is, everybody has problems. China's no different, but there's so, so, so many great things about China that I loved about living here. So as you can see, there's a lot more people over here in this part of the Bund is because over there is Nanjing Road, which is the second most popular tourist area in Shanghai. But once again, I cannot get over this view. I remember seeing it for the first time and I was absolutely blown away. Like, like I said, wait until tonight, you'll see it with, when it all lit up, it's, it's amazing. So over there is Nanjing Road. It's kind of like the Times Square of Shanghai. Here is a group of IEs dancing for TikTok. They're probably famous on Douyin. So if you're gonna write a comment on this video about politics, I don't care to be honest. It doesn't change my opinion. It, all I'm talking about is my personal experiences. So like I said, every single place, every single country, city has positives and negatives and Shanghai, China is no different. But there's so many great things about it. Like, like I said, the people are so kind here. It doesn't matter if you speak Mandarin or not. It doesn't matter that you look different from everybody else. You will get treated better here as a foreigner in so many Western countries. Absolute truth, you don't wanna believe it, that's all right. Doesn't matter what you believe. I've seen it, I've experienced it. So I just mentioned it there, but if you didn't know, I was a primary school English teacher here in Shanghai for two years and I didn't need to speak Mandarin for my job because I'm an English teacher, we speak English in the classroom. And I taught the first grade, my students were six and seven years old, all Chinese, and that was my job. And I absolutely loved it. It was an amazing experience. Like I can't even, can't even describe how amazing that experience was. And I got treated like a king, like the students, the parents, the school, the everybody, like absolutely everybody. I get so much more respect here in China as a teacher than in the UK. And I've been a teacher in the US as well. I'm actually kind of pretty sad sitting here because I sat here so many times, like a million times, just thinking about life and how I ended up in Shanghai, China. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna show you the view again, just because cannot get over it. Everybody's having a great day, beautiful weather today. Spirits are high. So like I said, I'm not gonna talk about it too much. This video is absolutely not about politics, but if you watch the news and they talk about China, 99.9% .9 is negative. And is it really that bad? No, it's not. It's really not. And um, you know, people believe whatever they wanna believe. And uh, it's kind of sad that people have this misconception about China purely because of the media. Like that's absolutely why people have this feeling about China. And I know that people are gonna watch this video and say, no, he's lying. Great. You can think whatever you want to think. It doesn't change my experience. It doesn't change my opinion. Honestly, I don't care about your opinion if you've never been here. Because if you get your opinion from China, from the Western media, it's all negative. Anyway, I'm not going to talk about the media anymore because that's, that's not what this video is about. It's about my own experiences. And I loved being a teacher here in Shanghai. I loved living in Shanghai. Every single day was an adventure. Every day. Like I said, I didn't need to speak Mandarin, but I wanted to learn it just so I can understand the culture a little bit and fit in and talk to the locals and you know order food in Chinese and things like that. And you're gonna see me do that later, but 
it's an amazing place. It honestly, honestly, it's an amazing place. Like, I've made over a hundred videos on YouTube. I've been all over the world and I get so many comments to say, Ben, I appreciate your honesty. This is my honesty. If you watch my previous videos and say, wow, this guy is so honest. And then you watch this video and say, no, he's lying. I can't, I can't do anything about your feelings about China, you know. I'm not trying to change your feelings. I don't care about your opinion of China. I'm just telling you my opinion and my experiences. And I had zero bad experiences as a foreigner in China. Doesn't matter if I was speaking Mandarin or English, doesn't matter. Like I said, if I walk up to someone not speaking Mandarin, if I speak English, they will help me. If I went to New York City, if I went to London and I didn't speak English, how many people would help me? Maybe some people, but a lot more people here would help you if you don't speak the language. And that really says something about the culture. And going back to teaching again, I, I got treated so great by, I'm still in contact with, with my students' parents. Like I still get messages from them. Teacher's Day was, a, was last month, so I got so many messages. And I only left Shanghai a year and a half ago. So now is November, 2024. And I left June 2022. So it's only been a year and a half since I was here. And uh, it was, like I said, it was an unbelievable experience. And um, I'm so happy to be back. Visit Shanghai if you can. Visit Shanghai. And right now is the easiest time in human history to visit China because I don't have a visa to visit China. There's around 50 countries that their citizens can come to China without a visa. That's what I'm doing right now. I don't have a visa, I just walked into Shanghai. Look, this Chinese lady is taking a picture of the foreigners. I'll talk about it in a second. But I don't have a visa. I've said it five times, sorry, but I don't have a visa using Shanghai as a transfer. So I came from London and then I get a 144 hour visa-free visit to Shanghai. And that is six days. So I can come here for six days without needing to apply for a visa to go to the embassy. Now is the easiest time ever, ever, ever in human history for people to visit China. They want foreigners to visit China. This is exactly why they've done it. So people can come here and see for themselves, this is really what China's like. And so many foreigners are doing it. All you have to do is go on YouTube, type, type in China vlog, and you'll see so many foreigners are visiting China. And they're saying, wow, I didn't know this place was gonna be like this. Wow, I've been lied to. Wow, this is the real China. Do it right now. If you don't believe me, go and do it. Is everybody lying? You know, maybe you think they are, but visit China. Visit China. I highly, highly recommend Shanghai. I've been to Beijing. I've seen the Great Wall, and uh, yeah, I'm sure people could have guessed that I used to live in Ch I used to live in China because yeah, I speak Chinese in my previous videos. But there you go. The truth is out, and I hope you hope you're excited to watch these these Shanghai videos. I'm, like I said, I'm going to be here for six days. I'm going to show you the real China. I'm going to tell you the truth, just like I do in every single video. I'm not biased at all. I'm not biased. I just have experience because coming here you're so far out of your comfort zone if you come from the western world because there is no country in the world like china there is no city in the world like shanghai like i said i've been to beijing and um seen the great war i've seen the terracotta warriors in xi'an i've seen the pandas in Chengdu, and it's an amazing country absolutely amazing and and without a doubt when i'm 80 years old i'm going to be telling my grandkids i used to live in china and they're going to be like wow tell me about it and i have a million stories honestly i could sit here all day and tell you about my experiences in china but i'm not going to do that um but visit visit china like i said there are 50 more over 50 countries now that their citizens can visit china without a visa that's what i did this morning i'm running on no sleep but my energy is so high right now because i love being here and it's I can't even say enough words like I'm not like I said this video is not to try and convince you I don't care about your opinion of China honestly if you don't like it great if you like it great you know life goes on this is just about my experiences and I'm literally here right now and I'm gonna document my my experiences so I feel like not a lot of people have seen China before and if they have seen it they've seen it on the news and that's not the real China so yeah if you feel like sticking around and uh, seeing China with me, then hit subscribe if you haven't already because we're really gonna see real life China. Like honestly, that's what I'm gonna show you and I'm gonna be honest. Is China perfect? Absolutely not. There, I left for a reason, you know? Like I was a primary school teacher, they wanted me to stay. I absolutely love my school, I love my students, I love the people I work with, but I left for my own personal reasons and that just proves that China is not perfect. Shanghai is not perfect, but it has so many great things going for it. Perfect example, I just rode the Shanghai Metro this morning. It cost me 
to get all the way across the city. No homeless people. It was so clean. And a few days ago, I was in London and I rode the London Underground. One, it's so expensive, it's so dirty, there's homeless people everywhere, it stinks, it's so unreliable. And that's just, that's just the complete opposite to the Shanghai Metro. That's just one thing. Uh, the bikes, so I showed you the bikes over there. Every single bike has a QR code. Nobody uses cash in China, absolutely nobody. I have zero, zero Chinese money. And I think in the two years that I lived here, I probably used Chinese money a handful of times. Nobody uses cash here. Everybody uses their phone to pay for stuff. Let me show you. All right, so it's pretty bright, so I'm not sure if you can see it, but right there is Alipay. And I also have WeChat. That's the WeChat icon right there. So these are the two apps that people in China use to pay for stuff. Pay for everything. Like you can pay your rent, you can get one of the bikes, you can pay for stuff in a restaurant, you can get a taxi. Every single thing is on your phone. Nobody has cash here. I could ask a hundred people here, maybe a handful of people will have cash. Nobody carries cash here because everything is so convenient. That is another thing I miss about living in Shanghai so much. Everything is so convenient and everything is so cheap. Like taxis are so cheap, transport, food, going out. Rent is expensive. I, I will say that rent is expensive because the apartment that I lived in, it was very, very nice, but it was expensive. Over there, I did see a Chinese lady take a picture of the foreigners. Happens every single day. Every single day that I lived in Shanghai, China, people were taking pictures of me. People were coming up and speaking English to me. Did it bother me? Sometimes, sometimes, because everybody has bad days and uh, 99, 99% of the time I would say hello, I would laugh, I would take pictures. Like I remember one time literally over here, there was literally a line of people waiting to take a picture with me. I was like, there's literally one of the best views ever in the world over there. And there's people waiting to take a picture with me because some of these people, they've never seen foreigners before, which it sounds unbelievable. I'm gonna actually, I have a video just to prove it to you. I'm gonna put it right here. <laughs> Hello. Yes. Huh? Shamarani <laughs> 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 <laughs>
a bottle of water is like 50 US cents. Like if you go to any tourist attraction in, I'm gonna use New York City and London as examples every single time. They're not gonna be, a, they're not gonna be one pound or one dollar, no way. But here, in the most famous thing in Shanghai, still so cheap. I do have a small confession to make. So my YouTube adventure started here and the channel that I have right now, Travel with Ben, this was not my first YouTube channel. I had a channel, Ben in China. So I have over 100 videos from China. So are you interested in watching those? Like I said, I've been to the Great Wall of China. I used to be an annual pass holder at Shanghai Disneyland. So I have like 20 videos, probably over 20 videos at Shanghai Disneyland. I'm probably going to release them to like members. So become a channel member if you want to see my previous China vlogs because I have over 100 of them because my YouTube adventure started right here. All right, one misconception, these guys here, Look at me, walking around with a camera. I'm a foreigner with a camera. Is he, is he telling me to stop? No. China is the safest country I've ever been to. Like I said, I've been to over 60 countries. Nowhere do I feel as safe as I do inside China. A lot of people are not gonna believe that, but it's absolutely true. China is incredibly safe, so safe. And anybody that says there's too many police, there's too many cameras, they're looking out for you. Don't break the law, simple as that. Anyway, none of that talk anymore. So this is Nanjing Road, let's take a look. So welcome to Nanjing Road. So like I said, this is Shanghai's Times Square kind of. Right there is the Peace Hotel, one of the most expensive hotels in Shanghai. Some of the famous people that have stayed there. Nanjing Road is the same as the Bun. Come here in the evening, come here at the weekend. There'll be absolutely millions of people here. By the way, Chinese women, absolutely beautiful and so stylish. And the kids are so cute. I miss my students so much. I just uploaded a picture of me in Shanghai and I got so many messages from my students. You're in Shanghai, you're in Shanghai. Look at this place. Look at all the lights, look at all the food. This is what you get in Shanghai, China. Look at this. We're gonna get food later, but everything here is so cheap as well. I had a friend of mine, so many times they tried to get me to try chicken feet. Never did it, never, never, never. I'll take you to the supermarket one of these days while I'm here because that's definitely an experience as well, a Chinese supermarket. You will literally see live animals in there. Like no joke, live animals. This is where they have a Christmas market and it's so lively down here. Always, always, always busy, always. I just talked for so long at the Bund that this battery is almost empty and my other batteries are in my suitcase at the hotel. Of course, China has all of the big brands. Did you know that the most popular fast food here in China is not McDonald's, it's actually KFC. Chinese people love KFC. They like to have it on New Year's. Like I said, it's been a year and a half since I've been here. That Five Guys was not there. But if you are Chinese, we are going to Mishue Bingchang. Mishue Bingchang was my absolute favorite thing. So this is Mishue Bingchang and I don't even need to speak to them. I can just scan this QR code and order on there. So I just ordered, I walked up there and there's a, there's a boy and a girl in there and the girl was like, oh no, because she obviously doesn't speak English and she didn't expect me to speak Chinese. It's so fun speaking Chinese, you know, I love it so much. I just love the surprise, like I love surprising people. Just look how convenient this is. Put it in a bag. One, two, three, ooh. I got peach tea, this was one dollar. I'm gonna say things in US dollars, by the way, because more Americans than British people watch my videos. This was eight UN, like $1.10 or something. This place is new as well. I've never seen this before. I never think about recording my interactions with people. I need to do that more. But here is the closest metro station to the Bund, East Nanjing Road, exit one. So I'm really lucky that it's so easy for me to pay for stuff here because I have a Chinese bank account. I have ICBC, so it's connected to my Alipay and WeChat, so I have no problems paying with stuff. But if you visit, uh, if you visit China, just make sure you have a card. You can connect to like Alipay with your, with your foreign card. You can definitely bring cash and spend cash, but it's not common for people here to, to use cash. But just over here is KFC, way more popular than McDonald's. This place is new as well, I've never seen this. Looks like a plushy place. Let's take a look. 
what this is sick this is so cool wow this definitely wasn't here before they have stitch i love stitch they have this guy is that a seal don't know this is cool Ooh, big lots of strawberry bear smells like strawberries Harry Potter what would you look at this Winnie the Pooh in China what what is going on this is cool wow they got a lot of Disney stuff in there yeah let me know if you want to see the Shanghai Disneyland vlogs because I have a lot of them Shanghai Disneyland is so cool like it's so different from Disney World in Orlando and then Disneyland in California so different but yeah I had an annual pass This area is all new as well because when I was here this was all boarded up for the longest time but now it's a huge open space beautiful day today the weather is absolutely perfect you can ride this little train on Nanjing Road for 10 yuan which is like $1.50 there is Mickey by the way if you want to know what Disney in Chinese is Dishini it's literally Dishini Anyway, I don't think I'm going to go to Shanghai Disneyland this week because I have so, many, so much stuff planned this week. One thing that always, always blew my mind in China is shopping malls. They are absolutely massive. Like every single shopping mall that you go inside will be so different and it will be huge. Like you can go like way outside the city and see a shopping mall and it will still be as big as this. Massive. Look at this curved escalator. Wow. This place is new as well. They got a whole store just for Pez, Pez heads. Look at that Disney Princess Pez. Wow. Hello, I crash and burn. It's a few hours later from the bund. But I checked into the hotel. It's very nice. I'll show you later. I checked in at one o'clock and it's currently five o'clock, 5.08. So I crashed. I slept for a few hours, but we're going to go take a look at Shanghai in the evening. The sun is just setting and we're going to get some dinner. So let's go. It's so nice out right now. So my hotel opens up right onto a restaurant street. Timmy's is very popular here in Shanghai. Me and my co-teachers used to get it pretty much every single morning for breakfast. Everyone's just getting off work now. The streets really come alive. When I was in Shanghai, I had an e-bike. It's so much fun, but it's so dangerous. There's literally no rules. Like they're just walking in the middle of the street. Nobody follows the lights. So every man for himself. One thing that has not changed is the smoking. Absolutely disgusting, it's everywhere. Horrible. Anyway, we might just be in time for something very special. Welcome back to the Bund. The lights are not on, but every night they have a time where the lights turn on. And now it's currently 5.28, so it could be 5.30, or it could be six, not sure. Let's wait a few minutes. I'm just gonna film, it's 5.29. They could be getting ready to turn on. So yeah, I go back to the hotel, took a shower immediately, and then slept for like two hours. But I'm so excited to be here. I just planned out my week here in Shanghai and I have so many great things planned. I'm going to meet some co-workers, people that I worked with before, some of my old friends so I'm excited for that too but I'm excited to see these lights turn on. Hopefully it's 5 30. You can take a boat cruise too, that's one of the popular things to do here at the Bund and uh, here you see a lot of people doing live streams for Douyin which is Chinese TikTok. There's a girl dancing right there. She's doing a live stream or filming a video for Douyin but so many people come out to the Bund at night let's wait right here to see if these lights turn on we might be out of luck it might be later on 5 30. still an amazing view it's pretty cool because sometimes when it's like misty and foggy like you won't be able to see the tops of the towers but I didn't even talk about these towers before so the most special one the oriental pearl tower is that one when it's lit up it's like pink and purple and I'm going up there tomorrow. You can actually go to the top. There's a restaurant up there, but you'll see that in tomorrow's video. That is, I think right today, it's the third tallest tower in the world, the Jinmao Tower. And then we have the Shanghai Tower, 
this one looks like a bottle opener that's the bottle opener right there but that is the Shanghai skyline it's absolutely beautiful and there's pictures online you can see this the Shanghai in like 1980 and there's nothing here so like all of this is like recent developments and it's amazing it's so beautiful even without the lights on it's even more beautiful with the lights on but they'll turn on sometime so many people are enjoying this nice weather the weather's beautiful it's absolutely perfect you get a lot of runners on the bund and just over there you see so many more people so if you ever come to the bun and it's super super busy just come a little bit south because that's where i am right now not too many people there's a guard right there i'm gonna go ask him what time the lights turn on dang isha dang isha we all ego wenti gaga jidian kai dong liu dian how the six o'clock six o'clock liu dian is six o'clock so we're 30 minutes early I wasn't gonna go over there because it's absolutely packed out with people, but let me show you what the crowds are like at the band. Ren Shan, Ren Hai. Speaking Chinese is so much fun. Like I know people that have lived in China for like 10 years and they can't speak a word. And it's kind of sad to be honest. Like I really wanted to immerse myself in the culture and I wanted to like speak to the people, you know? And it's so helpful. Like even just asking simple questions, like ordering in a restaurant, a taxi, like things like that. It's so helpful to know just a little bit. And you're gonna get so much respect because the people here understand just how difficult it is for a foreigner to learn Mandarin Chinese. So they give you so much respect if you even try just a little bit. There's so many people just sitting around waiting for the lights to turn on. We have 20 minutes and it's gonna be beautiful. So my favorite thing about speaking Chinese is catching people talking about me because <laughs> of course they don't expect me to understand and speak so so many times I just join in people's conversations when they've said something about me it's like yeah I can understand that's my favorite bit the Joker and for you cruisers out there Shanghai is a big big cruise port it's just over there the international cruise terminal and the ship sails right past the Bund one of the best sails in in the world crowds are not too bad tonight come back on the weekend and this place will be packed out but the more north you go on the bun, the more people there's going to be because that's where it meets Nanjing Road. We have seven minutes, seven minutes. I think we're just going to hang out here. Nanjing Road is just over there. There's so many people coming over here to see the lights. Isn't that just incredible? The camera doesn't do it justice, it's beautiful. So that happens every single night they turn the lights on, but of course, different time of year is different times. So in the summertime, it could be like eight or 9 p.m. because of course it needs to be dark. But the winter time, it would be earlier. Amazing, so many people. So over there is Nanjing Road. So many people still coming over to the barn. We are going to say goodbye to the Wai Tan. We're going to see it again tomorrow. We're going to head to Yuyuan to see if we can get some dinner. I miss riding my scooter. It used to take me 35, 40 minutes every single day to ride my scooter from my home to my school to work every day. I try and teach you some funny Chinese translations in some of these videos while I'm in Shanghai. So traffic light, traffic light is Hong Lu Dang. So the translation Hong is red. Lu is green and Dung is light. The translation is literally red green light. Hong Lu Dung. Are you ready for this? This place is absolutely beautiful. So this is called Yu Yuan. And I remember literally the first week, the first week that I arrived in China, I came here and I was just blown away. Like I still have those pictures on my Facebook. The first time I came here, I was just like, ah, oh, because look at it. Like when you think of China, like these are the buildings, these are the kind of buildings that I think of. And this is the absolute best place to be on Chinese New Year. We're gonna go inside there and I'm gonna show you, just wait till you get inside, like it's amazing. 
there are some beautiful Chinese ladies in Chinese dresses. So, any day of the week anybody can walk around here, but on Chinese New Year, they block it off and you have to get a ticket to go inside and it's always, always craziness. There's so much street food over here, souvenirs, so many good restaurants, bubble tea. <laughs> there are a million bubble tea stores in China. It's crazy. All right, here we go, get ready for this. Get ready to have your mind blown. I think my one advice of you Yuan is there's like a main food hall here skip it it's not good but there are so many small restaurants that do delicious food we're gonna get some in a second but just the buildings are just unreal so my favorite Chinese food is called Xiaolongbao and it's like one huge dumpling with uh, soup inside that's what it looks like and they make it fresh right here Xiaolongbao So I'm walking along the bridge here. I want to put some pictures on the screen right now of what it looks like during Chinese New Year because it's absolutely like unreal. Like it's unbelievable and you can't even move. There's so many people here, but this is so cool. So in the water here, they're going to set up like some floats of like animals because of course Chinese New Year, it's all about different animals. And did you know that the Chinese have a different calendar to like us, the Western world. And some of my Chinese friends, they have two birthdays. So like the Western calendar and then the Chinese calendar, two birthdays. But yeah, there's actually a Chinese garden here, which we're gonna go inside one of these days. Not sure which day, but definitely one of these days. But yeah, this is the outside. Anybody is free to walk around here and it's amazing. So this is the entrance to Yuan. The Chinese garden, of course, closed right now, but it's 40 Yuan. For an adult, 20 yuan for a child. 40 yuan is about five US dollars, 570. So it's great value because something like that in the UK or the US would be extremely expensive. I have no idea what that is. It just says cheese. It doesn't even look like cheese. It looks like rice on top. I don't know. I'm not gonna try that. Shake Shack. Look at that, it's like a suitcase scooter. That is cool, I want one. It always makes me laugh. We have something that looks so cool, so authentic, and then we have a McDonald's, yay. All right, let's try and find some dinner. There's two things that I would never, ever, ever try. One, chicken feet, no, no thank you. And the second one is tofu. The smell just makes me feel sick. No, 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 no. So when I lived in Shanghai, I had two go-to restaurants when I couldn't be really bothered to cook and well, I didn't cook that often to be honest, but this was one of them. Go here and get uh, rice with uh, beef on top, but we're gonna get Xiao Yang's dumplings. I couldn't even tell you how many times I came to Xiao Yang's. So I've already talked about QR codes today, so you just come and sit down, scan the QR code, and then you order it. My speaking Chinese is, it's okay, but my reading is, I struggle a lot. So I have to rely on the pictures a lot of times. And like just by looking, sometimes it's difficult to tell what it is or if it's spicy or some of the details. So yeah, sometimes you're, you don't know what you're ordering. So I've chosen my dumplings and a Coke, and then I'm just gonna pay with Alipay. Put in my code. And there you go. It's paid for, and now I wait. That was absolutely delicious. Some people came and sat right next to me, so I didn't want to bother them by speaking to the camera like a weirdo. So I got six beef dumplings and a Coke, and it was 24.50 yuan, which is like $3.50 US. Amazing. So many times after work, I would go to a Young's Dumplings because there's so many of them. 
like they're all over Shanghai and they fill you up like six dumplings like they're pretty big as well and the soup inside and they're always really really hot and I'll give you a perfect example of why Mandarin Chinese is so difficult so this character here that's a pretty difficult character to read right this is just ting which is stop like all of that just for stop it's crazy so difficult Ah, oh, back in the hotel now. It is 8.10. That means that 24 hours ago, I boarded a flight from London and now I'm gonna sleep in Shanghai, China. Pretty crazy, to be honest. That was 24 hours. I really, really hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope you're excited to see more of Shanghai because, like I said earlier, I'm really, really gonna show you the real Shanghai. And, and most people only get to see China on the news and it's usually not good news, but yeah, I'm really, really excited to, to show you Shanghai, China, and uh, I love this city. It's an amazing place. It's an amazing country, and I'm so excited to be here. So I'm going to be here for six days. I'm going to be making a video every single day. I actually didn't expect this video to be this long because I thought I would just film travel day, and then I would film like another video in the evening, but I just decided just to put the whole first day with, the, with, with travel day. So I hope that you enjoyed it anyway. I hope it was interesting. I hope you learned something, and... Uh, yeah, I just hope you're excited, honestly. And uh, and I just want to say thank you because the only reason that I can just jump on a flight to Shanghai, China and start filming videos and putting them on YouTube is because you watch my videos. Like, it sounds crazy, but, you know, I'm really trying to, I'm really trying to make this YouTube thing work and um, it's only going to work if you watch the videos, you know, like, if you want to watch them. This is just the start. This is just day one. So for the next few months, I'm going to be traveling nonstop. I have a cruise coming up, which I'll tell you about later. Um, we're gonna be here for six days, then we're going to another country, and it's gonna be a few months in Asia, so I'm so excited about it, and this is just the start. And there's gonna be so many videos coming, like, I'm just thinking about all the filming and editing, but I'm excited for it, you know? Like, I love doing this. I love showing you new places, because like I said, usually people don't get to see China, so you're really gonna see the, the real China if you wanna watch, you know? And I appreciate it if you do watch. Um, I appreciate it if you like this video. And subscribe if you want to see more because it's gonna be fun it's gonna be really really fun we're gonna be discovering new places and seeing new things try new food and uh, meeting some interesting people and seeing the world because that's what I want to do and I'm so excited to film it and I hope that you want to watch it so thank you so much for watching I'll show you the hotel later but that was 24 hours thank you so much to the channel members like I said earlier I have over 100 China vlogs from when I lived here Shanghai Disneyland, uh, Great Wall of China, all over Shanghai, all over so many places. So I'm going to be uploading those videos at a later date for channel members only. So if you want to become a channel member, I'd appreciate it so much because you guys help me so much. And I'm always happy when new people want to become channel members. So click the join button below this video to become a channel member. Hit subscribe if you want to see more and I will see you tomorrow. More of Shanghai, China. Thank you everyone. Good night.